Hey guys, I'm Dr. Rishi Desai, I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Osmosis, and I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Physician. I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases, and I did viral disease outbreak research. So COVID-19 is something that hits a lot of my interests, and I'm here to talk today about kind of the, the cases, where we stand, and also a very specific topic today will be serology. So let's take a look at the Johns Hopkins uh, website, where they update it daily. Uh, right now we stand at 885,000 plus cases, and the U.S. is leading that very uh, grim statistic with 190,000 cases. So right now the U.S. is standing at number one uh, in terms of number of cases, and Dr. Fauci uh, just uh, very recently spoke about his expectations in the coming months and said that we can expect 100 to 240,000 deaths, not cases, but deaths in the U.S. So very, very sad statistic in terms of that expectation. And I want to talk a little bit about one other part of that press conference, which was serology. In the coming weeks and months, we're going to hear more and more about serology, so I thought now would be a great time to get right into it. So to start out, there's this paper from Johns Hopkins uh, also, and what they talk about is how basically when your immune system gets the virus, when you get uh, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, you basically mount an immune response to the proteins that are on the outside of that virus. And so the main one is spike protein. And spike protein is one of the uh, proteins that's there. And one of the neat things uh, that we've discovered is that the spike protein doesn't mutate a lot. It's one of the proteins that you need, that the virus needs to get into our cells. And the fact that it doesn't mutate a lot means that if you mount a good response to spike protein, an immune response, then a month later, two months later, maybe many months later, that immune response is still going to protect you, even though the virus might mutate a little bit, it's not mutating a lot on that protein. So that's actually really, really good and helpful information. Now in terms of what your immune response looks like, uh, I just want to bring up a couple of screenshots. This is IgM. In your blood, you, you have different types of antibodies. The one that you initially form is called IgM. And if you have an IgM positive, it tells you that you have active infection. Now there's also IgG, and if you have IgG, which is another antibody in your blood, that usually indicates that you have past infection, that you've cleared the infection, and that now you're essentially immune or resistant to getting that infection again. So a couple of uh, screenshots here from Osmosis videos, if you want to go back and recap uh, your knowledge on those antibodies, you can do that. So what we're seeing now is that serology is available in the market. There, is, there are a number of companies out there. Uh, this is one called Epitope Diagnostics. They've actually released ELISA kits that they're sending out to laboratories to do it in a lab setting. So basically, uh, large numbers of people can get their serology tested all at once. There are also groups like BD, um, and there's another group in a moment I'll show you as well, where essentially this is actually point of care testing that's done uh, with a, a finger prick and a few drops of blood, and it essentially looks like a pregnancy test. So, you know, one line tells you that you're IgM positive, again, active infection. Two lines might mean that you're, you know, IgM and IgG positive, kind of showing both. Or you might just have IgG, meaning that you've kind of cleared the infection, it's kind of well behind you. And again, this is the other company doing this. This is from the Biomedomics website. Um, the cool thing about this uh, company is that they actually published their sensitivity and specificity data. So you can see that their sensitivity and specificity is around 90%. That's what they're publishing. That means 9 out of 10 times, uh, if, they, if they say it's positive, it really is. And if they say it's negative, it really is. The flip side is that 10% of the time, uh, for both a positive and a negative, it's actually inaccurate. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, you have to... Also, weigh that against our current testing, which is RT-PCR. RT-PCR is looking for the viral RNA. So unlike serology tests, where they're looking for an immune response, RT-PCR, which is the gold standard, is looking for the virus itself. And that sensitivity is actually much lower, believe it or not. So it's, you know, based on the, the data, you know, 30 to 70% is what I've seen. So this sensitivity is much higher than that which is immediately kind of an interesting thing. And you can imagine putting both serology and RT-PCR together, you might get even better results. So putting this together, what we're already seeing now is that some states, and this is a Washington Post article, are now, or some, some counties within states, and this is in Telluride, Colorado, are suggesting doing county-wide serology testing. Now think about that. That means that you can basically 
check everyone in the entire county who has an IgG response, and those are the people that are basically safe to go back out to the community, restart their businesses, go back to daycare, essentially kind of resume life as normal if you have that IgG positive. And taken a step further, in Germany, one of the, the heads of uh, the epidemiology departments out there suggested this idea of a certificate. So you can almost imagine an immune certificate saying, hey, these are the people that the state or the country has declared being uh, essentially resistant to reinfection. And you know, you can imagine that that standard would have to be set in terms of how much you need to uh, have to, to really prove that you're resistant. But the fact that other countries are already doing this means that in all likelihood in the U.S. we're likely going to be looking to these sorts of ideas of like immune certificates in the coming months. And with that, I'll say thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing this daily, discussing different topics related to COVID-19. And what we want to do is essentially figure out ways to flatten the curve and raise the line, the line being the healthcare capacity line, to make sure that we can try to ward off these um, these terrible and grim statistics that we're expecting uh, to potentially have to deal with. Thanks a lot.